Welcome back to the Centered on Buffalo podcast. This week, we are joined by former NFL quarterback, current Amazon Prime, Thursday Night Football analyst, and perennial bottom third finisher at the American Century Golf Tournament. Ryan Fitzpatrick, welcome to the podcast. Okay, dude, I did the best I've ever done this year, by the way. I think I was 40th, so I was about, you know, half. But yeah. I, I was po- I was in the positives every day, so it was a, it was a good performance for me. Were you working on your game prior, or was, did you just find it that weekend? Yeah, so I I got a place in Flagstaff in Arizona, which is at elevation. So I got to play six rounds in two weeks, right before the event in Tahoe. So I was ready for I was ready for the elevation. Uh, I was ready for the American Century Championship, and it was my best performance to date. My favorite story from you playing in that tournament is when you got the new Garmin watch and you didn't advance it to the next hole. So then you hit a 150 yard shot when you should have hit about a 90 yard shot and blew it way past the green. Uh, I'd love that one. So what actually happened was I, for the tournament, they switched one in 10 um, only Uh, for like TV. And so it was, you know, I was on the first hole, the Garmin watch said I was on the first hole, but actually it was the 10th hole. And so <laughs> it was like 30 yards different, which was not great. But yeah. uh, a couple of good things that happened in the past too. I got asked to sign an autograph and they handed me a picture of Sebastian Janikowski. That was Ooh. fun. That's when I had to look myself in the mirror. And then this year it was constant Jason Kelsey. So there's a, probably a lot of disappointed people out there. Um, that their Jason Kelsey signature looks like mine. Cause they thought that I was Jason. That's um, you were picking up some weight to get the Sebastian Janikowski reference. <laughs> yeah. And that was like, that was like in the middle of my career too. It wasn't at the tail end. So that's when I knew I had to put it in overdrive before training camp started. Oh, that's funny. All right. So you're just on the call last week for the Thursday night football game between the bills and the dolphins. You got to see the bills up close in person. And there was a lot of skepticism heading into the season, a lot of new faces. And now they've already been bitten by the injury bug. How good can this bills team be this year though? I was shocked, especially early after Bernard went down. I was shocked at how their defense played and held up that whole game. Cause for me, more so than Gabe Davis and Diggs being gone, it was the defense. It was right. Poyer and Hyde being gone. Uh, and then, of course, when Milano goes down, it was like the middle of that defense has just been shredded. But uh, that was a really impressive performance. Glad to see that TB hopefully won't be out for too long. Um, but I'll say on the other end of it, it's been really fun watching Josh these last two games. You know, they say the mantra, everybody eats. They say kind of receiver by committee, throw into who's open. But it is it is freeing as a quarterback. Uh, once you get an older, established veteran receiver that's been a go-to guy his whole career, on third down when he's supposed to get the ball and it's man-to-man and he doesn't get the ball, uh, you know, that's something that is weighing on your decision-making. And so Josh just seems to be playing very free right now. Not afraid to make anybody mad if the ball doesn't go their way. Throw into the open guy. Everybody contributing. Everybody involved in the run game. And it's been really nice to see and, and kind of, a, I think, refreshing for him to be able to have that pressure and weight off of his shoulders. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, and look, through two weeks, small sample size, Joe Brady is giving him more easy button throws. The fourth and three in the red zone where James Cook is wide open, from the man beater starting the game with a couple little bubble screens to Kincaid. It's not, Hey Josh, push the ball down the field, throw these deep dig routes over and over. It just seems like Joe Brady through a couple weeks has given him easier answers out there as well. Yeah. I think as a quarterback, we always talk about the breather plays and having some of those plays where everything doesn't just fall on you. And even just a good running game that really helps. Right. Um, you know, Josh is going to be Josh on those third downs, putting him in gun and allowing him to survey the field and sometimes taking off for the first downs. And then, you know, the big play in that game, the third down where he scrambles out to the right and finds, I think it was Ty Johnson yep. uh, for like a 33 yarder on Jalen Ramsey down the field. Those are plays that are just going to happen. Uh, and guys have to learn Josh's style, but uh, it, it was awesome to see. It's such a well-balanced offense right now. Uh, and, you know, for a guy like Josh, who has all the pressure in the world, 
on him for the defense to be playing like they're playing, for the running game to be going like it's going. It makes his job a lot easier. Yeah, the and the Bills have leaned on this run game, and it seems like throughout the league, teams are starting to lean on the run game. The passing stats are just so far down from years past through two weeks. Is this a new trend with the run game and just, you know, basically combating how teams are playing defense nowadays? Yeah, I mean, I think on the defensive side, teams have gotten smaller. There's a lot more teams that are playing too high and kind of daring you to run. There's a style of bend but don't break. Uh, so all that, you know, as a fan, it's a little bit frustrating to watch. Uh, and the other thing is, and you've certainly seen it through the first two weeks, is this this new thought process as a quarterback of, you know, let's just get us – through the game here don't make any big mistakes let's keep it close for the end of the game the ball's not being pushed down the field and it's not that passes aren't being hit down the field it's that people aren't even attempting to throw the ball down the field uh and this has just kind of been a trend in the league i think kansas city you know the last few years has been really successful with it and, and so copycat league you're trying to find ways you know to look like kansas city now kansas city also has an elite defense uh, and they've lacked some of those playmakers since they lost Tyreek. So uh, it, it's kind of frustrating as a fan now to watch the inability for teams to push it down the field. But that's why it's so refreshing. You know, a guy that I criticized last year in our Thursday night game, uh, Derek Carr, it's refreshing to see those balls being thrown over safety's head and down the field to Rashid Shahid uh, because there aren't a lot of teams doing it right now. How tough is it for you? I, I made fun of you the last time with the Jared Goff comment in – comparing him to Matt Ryan and you caught some flack for that. How tough has it been in this current transition into media to make those critical? Cause you can't just be all sunshine and rainbows as an analyst, but then a lot of times you're going to run into these guys. Is, has that been tough for you? Not really. I mean, it's, it's one of those things, uh, you know, I, and all of us on the desk, like we all understand how difficult it is to play this game. And so in, as long as the criticism isn't personal, as long as it's, based on what you're observing and what they're doing on the field, then I think it's okay and everything's in bounds. As soon as it starts to become personal, that's when it gets out of bounds. And look, I also like to, you know, always kind of make the point of, it's like I spent 17 years in the league trying to perfect what it was to be a quarterback and never got close, you know, continue to make tons of mistakes, had some, some ups and some downs, but it's a difficult position and so some of the other stuff that I love weighing in and talking about and, you know, now this newfound Twitter, you know, I mean, I know, Eric, you never thought you'd see the day, but I'm finally signed up. Uh, and it's really fun just to hop in and out of comments and get in and out of uh, conversations. I think I've been missing out the last few years. You have been. And and I know you've had social media accounts because I'll post something and unless it's Liza, your wife, letting you know that I post something, uh, maybe. Uh, just oh, no, something I've you been a ghost. Know. Yeah, I've been a ghost on Twitter for a while. Just never, you know, posting for myself. So your initial post was on Instagram and it was the Shake Shack. And I'm sure Andrew, the producer, will put this in here. Uh, but the Shake Shack photo you land on your side. I'm not going to ask you how much money they paid you to do it, but I mean, was it basically them coming to you and saying, Hey, we're willing to make you an offer if you're willing to get rolling on social media. Yeah. So they, they came to me and said, we'd love uh, to be your first post. Now I think what they had in mind was me going to a shake shack, holding up the phone and saying, you know, I love your chicken sandwich that you guys make. And I came back to them with that idea and said, well, what do you think about recreating uh, this Cosmo ad uh, or centerfold with Burt Reynolds? Didn't think they'd say yes to that one. And right away they came back and they're like, boy, we think this is a great idea. So uh, it kind of all came together in like two or three days. Had somebody come out, take the photo. My kids actually walked up uh, into our house as the photos were being taken. No. And they were just like that. Like it, it was funny because a few of them were like, dad, what are you doing? And a few of them just kind of walked by like, Oh, just another day, you know? <laughs> but I told, uh, I told my oldest boys, I said, this is what daddy does for work now, guys. And they understood. Yeah. Yeah. They get it. They get the, they get the hustle nowadays. That is so funny. Well, <laughs> well, let me, let me formally welcome you to social media and you made 
quite the splash uh, with opening weekend of football. It was like the biggest news coming across or all of my text messages coming in were either about Tyreek Hill getting arrested or your Instagram posts. So well done. Well, I'll, I'll tell you the thing I like about it too is – like Stevie Johnson, since we played, I haven't been able to get. He changed his number like every other year, or so I I haven't been able to get a hold of him forever. Uh, so now that I'm on Twitter, I can just send something to Stevie, and he'll see it and he'll get back to me. So this is like it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So the biggest storyline coming out of this Bills Dolphins games was the two a concussion, and I know you played with them, have a relationship with them, and so. It's a, it's just a, such a tough and delicate situation, but if you're giving him advice in this situation and him, you know, he inevitably has a really tough decision to make about either coming back or whatever it may be. What are you telling him in this instance? When he got the concussion against the Bengals a few years ago, that was like my welcome to TV moment where it happened. It was horrific. You know, he gets carted off of the field. Uh, and then they're like, shove a microphone in your face and say, all right, you're on TV, go. Um, so this time, having dealt with it before, having dealt with some of those emotions, uh, I, I thought we as analysts on Thursday Night Football had a pretty pretty good discussion about it. Uh, and a lot of it was you know, Tony Gonzalez saying, look, he's got to retire. Uh, there were some other opinions by Sherman Witt thrown out there. And, and my biggest thing was, look, Let's just take a breath. Let's let's wait. Let's not make him retire or make him play. Let's give him some time. Uh, let him sit down and discuss it with his family. But ultimately, it's going to be up to Tua. Like, what do you want to do, Tua? And, and to me, it's going to be really hard as a competitor, as somebody that this is what he's done his whole life. This is the position he's dreamed about being in. And there's a lot more that he wants to accomplish as a football player. It's going to be really difficult. Uh, to walk away from the game. And I, I really don't see that happening, but I just think that we all need to step back, give him his space and allow him to make a decision when it's the time. And when he feels good about it uh, for him and his family. Yeah. And regardless of the decision he makes, people are going to have a, an opinion on either side, but unless you're in his shoes and unless you're his family or agent or whoever's helping to make this decision, the neurologist, you know, you got to just respect whatever this decision ends up being. And it's a tough one. I mean, my career ended with injury and I had no possibility for return to play, which, you know, looking back, maybe is a blessing because I would have, I would have likely done anything to get back out on the football field. And so, yeah, I, I, that's what I think for you, it was almost, it was almost uh, a relief for the doctors to say, you can't do it because it took the decision out of your hands. Cause it is as football players, we have such a difficult time you know, determining when the end is or walking away from the game. The scary part for me on the Tua play was that it, it looked like a normal hit, right? Mm -hmm. That was, to me, that was the most concerning thing is, you know, it wasn't anything out of the ordinary. If you look at the one in the Bengals a couple of years ago, or even Green Bay, where his head is getting slammed into his back, of, back of the head is getting slammed into the ground. Those aren't normal plays. Those are things that guys can be concussed at all the time. This one being kind of a normal looking play makes it scarier to me. Yeah, absolutely. I feel the exact same way. All right, let's give a quick shout out to Prime, our sponsor. Check out their collaborations they got going with Kevin Durant, WWE, Aaron Judge. Those are all uh, hits in our household. Fitz, are your kids on the Prime train yet? Uh, we're we're mixed. Uh, I know that's an ad for him, so I got to say yes, Eric. But we're, you, don't, uh, you don't have to. Okay, it hits it hits right with some of my kids and it doesn't for others. But you know, we've got I've got seven and then my brother next door has five. So we've got twelve children. So we can test out any product that anybody wants to send our way. Uh, we it's a mixed plenty. bag. We'll have plenty yeah, coming good. your way. All right. So we, we got a bunch of fan questions. I ciphered through all these to hopefully get us some decent ones. All right. So we'll start here. If you could put yourself as a quarterback on any team right now, like prime of your career, you could be on any team right now based upon the offensive coordinator, the talent that would be around you in the offense. Who would it be? Well, Devo just went down, but I would say the 49ers, you know, that was a scheme I never got to play in. Um, and obviously a scheme that has kind of taken over the league. A lot of it based on kind of timing, anticipation, run after catch. Um, so I would say San Francisco 49ers. 
Who was the toughest defensive coordinator throughout your career to play against and prepare for? I mean, there were there were lots of them, but I would say, you know, I never had a whole lot of luck against Pittsburgh. And so whether it was LeBeau or, or somebody else, it was always the same system. Uh, Rex Ryan was just always a wild card, you know, because especially back in the Bills days uh, when he was with the Jets, you just never knew. I mean, it was a really talented defense, but you just never knew where it was coming from. Uh, so I, I think those – those two guys, uh, LeBeau and his system in Pittsburgh and Rex kind of in his heyday with the talent they had uh, with the Jets were probably the two most difficult. Who was your favorite coach that you played for throughout your career? You know, I've had a lot of them. I love Chan Gailey. You know, Chan, obviously, with the Bills being the head coach and then a few other stops, Jets in Miami as an offensive coordinator. Loved him as a coach. He really was the first one that really believed in me. And he's, as you know, and even – better human being mm -hmm. uh, really enjoyed playing for Bill O'Brien. I thought, you know, Bill did a great job in Houston. I was with him his first year there. Um, but Bill, Bill was a guy I really enjoyed playing for. And let's see, I mean, I just had too many, too many coaches. <laughs> so there's, there's a few of them for you. What's your go-to pizza order? Like what toppings are you getting? I'll tell you, this one's a little bit weird for me because I'm not a big red sauce guy. Like I, I usually am like a white pizza kind of guy. Um, and I know that's going to make a lot of people upset and angry in the comments box now that I'm a Twitter guy or an X guy, but, um, yeah, I'm more of a white pizza kind of guy. Would it be harder for an NFL player to play in an NBA game? So not, Hey, you have a full off season of training, just an NFL player to play in an NBA game or an NBA player to play in an NFL game? You know, this is, it's an interesting argument. I mean, we got to, I feel like we got to narrow it down a little bit. So like, are we going to say, you know, let's say, is it going to be harder for LeBron to play in an NFL game or is it going to be harder for Fred Warner to play in an NBA game? Um, I, I would say this. I would think it would be harder for an NBA guy to play in an NFL game, A, because of the physicality, uh, and B, because it's just it's probably going to be much more foreign to an NBA player, whereas if you put Fred Warner uh, or somebody at an NBA game, you know, they can still be a role player. They can still – they don't have to shoot threes and score 30 points. They can hustle, they can be physical, and they can get rebounds, so – uh, I would say NFL to NBA would probably be easier. I, I thought the same thing. And then I'm sure people will have an adverse opinion on this, but um, I, I just feel like you could, you could blend in a touch easier on an NBA floor than you could in an NFL game. Obviously, you know, playing a specialized position in the NFL, like quarterback, that's going to be the hardest. But I feel like the hits and – I would love to see if you're not familiar with even putting on football equipment, how long that would even take, which is not a fun process. And as buddies, kids, my Garrett's playing flag football now, but as buddies, kids get into playing football, I often get calls and texts from their parents saying you had to do this for how many years? Like at what point do you get used to it? And I'm like, well, you really don't. And it almost gets worse when it becomes taping and bracing and everything else. Yeah. When you, you know, when you get a, uh, playing further advanced football. Well, I would like to see, I would like to see like a Draymond Green, who's obviously like an enforcer and a really physical guy, a really skilled guy in the NBA. Uh, I would love to see him play defense in the NFL. What position would he play? What does that look like? And all of a sudden, how does that physicality uh, end up, what does it end up looking like in the NFL? Let's take a moment to hear from one of our sponsors, and that's Dano's Seasoning. Let Dano's make you the hero of your tailgate this fall. As you're out tailgating for a football game, they will elevate anything you have out there on the grill or that you've whipped up. Go out and get you some at danoseasoning.com. We have the link to that in the show notes or get yours wherever they're sold nationally. All right, so if you're NFL commissioner for a day, what rule change are you making, if any? I mean, the first thing that popped in my mind was this, this kickoff thing. <laughs> You know, how can we, how can we make it better? Um, you know, I was really disappointed. They did the, the chain gang thing in the preseason where they were going to use the cameras. And I think they've got six different angles 
and they just didn't feel like it was ready for the regular season. Um, I think there's more that we can do with the chips and the footballs to actually like, you know, in terms of determining, okay, somebody's knee is down in a replay. We can't see where the ball is, but you can determine where the football is by these chips in the football. Uh, I would like to see us make a little more progress with the technology in that way. So just two weeks into the season, but give me your rookie quarterback rankings right now, like where you see this rookie quarterback class shaking out as, as you project it throughout the rest of the season. And, you know, like a guy like Drake may maybe the first couple seasons, Jaden Daniels has the leg up on a few of these other guys because of his athleticism. I think that helps early on, you know, when you're not sure when there's some uncertainty to be able to get out of uh, those problems and be able to scramble and make plays. Um, Nice to see him pick up his first win last week. You know, Bo Nix, uh, I think he's going to continue to get better. I think that coaching matters a lot, and it, it hasn't gone well the first two weeks for him, but I think Sean Payton's a great offensive football coach. Um, you know, obviously there's some talent issues on that team right now, but I see him getting better and better as the season goes on, hopefully. Caleb Williams, I, I mean, we saw... Belichick was really critical of the way that roster's kind of been put together, not really paying too much attention to the offensive line and paying a lot of attention to the skill guys. I think that's going to continue to get better as well, though. They're a good defensive football team. They do have weapons on the outside. Uh, He's right now having to learn the limitations of his athleticism and when he's going to be able to escape the pocket and for how long and, you know, what the best way to do that is. That's going to be a work in progress all season long, but uh, I'm, I'm surprised we haven't seen a little bit better out of him early on because he's been so good under the bright lights and isn't afraid of the spotlight and all that. But I think he'll get better as the season goes on too. As you look at the AFC shaking out right now, you know, Kansas city, Buffalo, Houston have all looked good. Who else do you see emerging kind of as the, maybe that fourth best team, the Ravens haven't looked good. The Bengals haven't looked good. Jacksonville sitting at zero and two. Is there anyone else in the AFC where you're saying, okay, I think this is likely the fourth best team in the AFC. Yeah. I mean, I I don't think you can write off the Bengals or the Ravens. The the Ravens are going to be fine. I I think the Ravens are working out some issues up front. Um, You know, they lost a lot of linemen up front, obviously, you know, very sad Joe D passing away Mm -hmm. uh, and just kind of the adversity they had to deal with there. George Warhop. Uh, had to step in and we'll do his best to kind of get those guys going, but I'm not worried about the Ravens. Uh, I'm still not worried about the Bengals. They've been in this position before. I think we saw a better version of Joe Burrow this last week. And then the Jets. I I think the Jets are going to be tough. I really do, especially as this offense gets going a little bit and Aaron gets a little more comfortable. Been surprised at the performance of their defense. They've got to get better up front, but I I think the Jets will be somebody that's going to be a tough out when the postseason comes. All right, we have Bills, Jags coming up Monday night football. You had a pretty solid score project. I mean, you picked the winner of Bills, Dolphins. You were a little off on the score. You're only off on three. I'll tell you you what, though. If if Tua stays healthy in that game, I had 34-31. I was feeling really good about it. Uh, And obviously, Tua getting hurt, uh, the the Dolphins didn't put up many points. Hey, Dad, I'm on a podcast with Eric Wood. Yeah. Tell him say I said hi, hi to my dad. Oh, you just say hi to him. What's going on? Good to see you, brother. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Uh, score, prediction, <laughs> score prediction, Bills, Jags. I'll tell you what, that is a team in some turmoil right now. It has not looked good uh, the last seven or eight games for them. Um, I was shocked. They didn't come out and play better on offense this last week. I'm going to predict they're going to play better on offense this week and say 20, 27 to 25 Buffalo wins it. All right, last one. Would you shave your beard and wax your chest to guarantee a Bills Super Bowl win this season? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've been looking for reasons to wax my chest on air. So if you have any, I want to do that at some point this year, just like the Steve Carell, uh, Kelly Clarkson moment. But I I need to find a good reason to do it. 
Well, there's your reason. I don't know how we sell this to Amazon, <laughs> but well, yeah. So can that? So so it will guarantee. How are we going to guarantee that well, gives the bills? It? Maybe we just say if they do it, we make a. Maybe that would be a great social media moment for you. Instagram Live, X Live, waxing of the chest post Super Bowl victory. Okay, we'll do that. If the Bills win the Super Bowl, I will wax my chest live on whatever medium you want me to do it on, Eric. That's only a deal. fans, anything. Yeah, whatever. I mean, whatever draws the biggest crowd, you know. When well, I don't know if you saw this or not, but when Sauce Gardner called out the fan or whatever about you hit me up on OF and then it may or may not have been true afterwards. And they said it was slander. Did you know what OF stood for? Nope. This is the first time I'm hearing about this. So <laughs> OF is only fans. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. I, di I didn't know either. So uh, consider me in that camp. Hey, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Uh, the, the fans always love when you come on. I appreciate you, brother. All right. Thanks dude. See you.